welcome and thank you for tuning into the Property Market Insights podcast where we discuss all things property market, whether it's the house price index, mortgage and bank rates, transaction volumes, where's hot and where's not, there should be something for everyone with an interest in property. As ever, my name's Dan and I'm joined each week by Anthony to take a look at the hottest topics. This week in episode 10, we'll be taking a look at bank rates, housing transactions, house prices, along with the where's hot and where's not. We'll be looking at a number of charts, so if you've not found us on YouTube yet, head over there and search for Property Market Insights. If you're watching us on YouTube, please do remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. I placed a link below this video uh, to a page where you can submit your questions for future episodes, so please do get involved. Anthony, good afternoon. How are you doing this week? Hi, Dan. I'm doing I'm doing really well. So it's my um it's it's kind of my favourite day of the month um, because today's the day we've updated all those twin dig market values. And so, you know, if you haven't if you haven't claimed your twin dig, Go and claim to index. So, so you'll get an email or you'll get a WhatsApp message, depending on what what kind of you you've chosen, how you want us to to communicate with you, and um, it gives you an update on the on the value of the home and all the hot streets and um, expensive houses and stuff in your area. And the reason why I like today is because you know I get a notification um, every time someone kind of logs in, and it's it's that period we send the email out, and then literally straight away, you know, the old counter starts going. So yeah, it's it's. Um, it's a good, good, good for my ego day today. Good. Well, I must admit, I got my emails and I got my WhatsApp messages, and I did have a login and see what was going on. But I mean, I'm in there most days anyway, so I'm always sort of on it, uh, even though things don't change day to day. Um, but yeah, being one of those people fascinated by property prices and trends, I'm all over it. Um, but today, today has been uh, another remarkable day. Things hot off the press. Things we need to talk about. I know we were talking about bank rates and housing transactions, but bank rates. Crikey, what's just happened? Shall we start there? Yeah, yeah, and we've I've just about managed um, just about managed to keep up um, with with events on the on the whole charts. So yes, yeah, so bank rate today, so chart one, the eleventh the eleventh rise in a row. Um, so we've now gone past the big four zero, and we're at four point two five percent bank rate. And um, I think I think most people weren't expecting weren't expecting a change in bank rate until yesterday. So until we had the um, the inflation, the, the consumer price index data out yesterday, which was higher, higher than anticipated. So it had gone from um, 10.1 to 10.4 and everyone had expected it to go to go below 10. And um, in part, that was driven by food prices and alcohol prices. So some of the key drivers were uh, domestic issues, not not international issues. So it wasn't necessarily that you know, Silicon Valley Bank and Credit Suisse and the Fed putting up rates. It was like actually closer to home was was one of the drivers there. So, so yeah, a good good in a way. It wasn't you know a fifty basis point rise, so not to four and a half, but to, to four point two five. Um, seven seven voted uh, for that raise on the the Monetary Policy Committee, and two voted to hold it steady um, at four. And um, interestingly. In the in the kind of discussions that they had, the the kind of talk now is that maybe bank rate peaks in August uh, 2023 uh, at four and a half percent. And the good news, I guess, in there is that although inflation was higher than anticipated, the the um, Bank of England still expect it to be kind of falling down in in Q3 on the way to their um, on the way to their two percent sustainable target. And I think it just reinforces that, you know, if anyone was in any doubt, the, the Bank of England um, has three priorities, inflation, inflation and inflation. And they're going to keep rising that, that bank rate until until that inflation figure starts coming down. So whilst that graph looks quite horrific, um, if, we, if we look at the next chart, put it in a bit of context, um, I mean, it's still virtually a straight line, but again, you know, we've been here before, we've been higher before, and that's kind of from the, the turn of turn of the century. It still seems weird, doesn't it, saying turn of the century? Um, it makes me <laughs> makes me feel really old. Um, but if we go back even further in history, we can see that even at, even at four point two five, in the context of history, it's still pretty low, right? So as you can see, all the way through the the kind of the noughties and the nineties, um, we would have said, ah. Oh, 4.25. What's the problem there? What's the problem there? Um, yeah, not a problem at all. Um, but yeah, I mean, I appreciate 
it is a problem if you've if you've got if you borrowed on the basis of um, a much lower rate and those rates are going up and um you know mrs trellis was was hot off hot off the the rails um following the the bank rate decision and she's um emailed in uh, Mrs. Trellis. So she says, um, Dear Property Market Insights podcast, bank rates literally just gone up. Um, can you help me out? How will it impact my mortgage payments? Um, so if we look at the next slide, we've got our classic mortgage payment ready reckoner. So if you want a variable rate, if you want a bank rate tracker, which about 1.4 million people are, then you could see your bank, your mortgage rate either going up tomorrow or probably more likely um, at the start of next month. And so you can use our Ready Reckoner, you know, to see how that mortgage rate changes um, your payments. Um, but probably an easier thing to do on the next slide is just go to our mortgage payment calculator. So Twindig Tools Mortgage Calculator, plug in your information, and it will just give you exactly what you need without having to look up and pick the right line and miss the number. And just it does it just does it all for you, which is good. Um, and I'm guessing, Dan, you must be happy you now. There's you had a bit of buyer's remorse the other day on your mortgage, but I guess now, bank rate going up, you must be happier that you locked in before it did. It's been a roller coaster. Yeah, you are absolutely right. Um, I have my heart has sunk on numerous occasions over the last few weeks where the rates have come down or there have been some really good remortgage rates, and um, I've thought, oh, I locked in far too soon. You know, why did I do it? Why didn't I just wait? And now today I feel great. Um, the only thing I'm slightly hesitant about is the fact that we locked in for five years. Um, the benefit for the bank, obviously, at offering five years is we're locked in at their rates. They're on a punt thinking, well, if the figures go down, they're going to make uh, more money from me. And I'm sitting there going, well, if they go up, I'm going to benefit from them. So, you know, we took that 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 risk or limited our, our risk profile by saying we'll fix it for five years. For us, although the figures had gone up, our monthlies had gone up relatively significantly, um, we still it's still in the boundaries of, of affordable. So, you know, we're not panicking if we're going, right, well, if we can afford it now, chances are we're still going to afford it over the next five year period. So we can just ride it out. And in five years time, hopefully we'll be really thrilled at the remortgage we can do because it'll be a really good rate and we'll go, right, whoa, we can make some savings now. So, you know, it, yes, I mean, I can literally just Put it to one side and say it doesn't matter what happens with the base rate because we're locked in for five years. It's kind of off my radar for the moment, um, which is great. But I must admit, when I look back at the charts, I do remember buying in the late 90s and looking at the rates that we were getting then. And, you know, again, I think we said it several weeks ago, had had the opportunity to get the rates today, then we'd have been thrilled. Um it's only because we've been really, really um, spoilt by such low rates. I mean, I look at that and think, right, the reason why those rates came down is because we had the financial crisis. That was a crisis. And we can see this this zero rates or close to zero rates as our recovery period. And we're almost flatlining. And then, of course, we're seeing them go back up again. Is that recovery is that should be that considered as recovery um i think for many it is for savers might be saying thank goodness you know suddenly our money in savings is might actually give us some sort of return you know i think that that happy line we saw between sort of 93 and 2008 um okay it fluctuated but it was kind of a happy zone property market was happy savers were happy it was kind of a good balance and we're just back up to those levels so i'm not disheartened by it yes i'm disappointed to see you know the the, the fact that the, the the, uh, the fixed rates are where they are. But in the great scheme of things, I'm not overly upset by it because anything in savings is benefiting. It's still affordable. There's still a market there. So, you know, let's just go with it. It is what it is. Um, so there has been some quite encouraging signs, really. But yeah, I look at I'm, I'm always a half glass full. So I do see this as well, it's, it's a recovery section, surely. And maybe we're now up to the new normal and this is where it's going to bubble for the next few years. Great. No problems. Good stuff. I'm 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 glad you're you're an optimist because the um you know the other data we had out this week you know isn't necessarily um, for the optimists. Uh, so we had um, housing transaction data out earlier this week, and um, you know just to rub salt into the wounds, I put a massive arrow um, just in case it's not sure which direction it's going in. So you know 
an, another reduction in housing transactions. Um, and I think, you know, at the start of the year, we said we think housing transactions are going to go down uh, 20%. And we're currently on that trajectory. Right? The current run rate um, is around 15% down. Um, so I think <clears throat> I think we've got more, more declines uh, to come. You know, the positive of that, in my view, is that that takes the heat from house prices. If people, if there's fewer people putting their homes on the market, um, you know, there's less, as in it keeps, restricts supply. Um, that means if demand's falling, supply is falling as well. So your prices aren't going to fall as much as if you had, you know, 10 homes for sale for every buyer. We're just not in that situation. Um, as all agents out there will know, you know, supply is really, really tight still. So expect more of that to come you know, put the yellow bar on there, you know, still not massively different from the kind of the long run average around 100,000 transactions um, a month, still a lot of transactions, um, but will be tending down. And also we had this this week, yesterday, in fact, um, the latest land registry data. So average house prices down um, across the UK, £3,735, so 1.1% um, down, um, but you know, looking back over the year, still up seventeen thousand um, pounds. And if we look, if we kind of zoom in to the regional picture, we can see that um, prices fell in all but two areas on average. Uh, and this is data for January. So you can see Wales um, down of five thousand um, pounds, almost as much as, as kind of London. And then just, you know, the West Midlands and the Northeast, just tiny, tiny increases. Um, but the, you know, <laughs> the movement is down, not up. And if we look at percentages, uh, you can see it's kind of around, you know, the broadly around the 1%. You've got a few higher than that, obviously Wales, Yorkshire and Humber and the Northwest um, higher than, well, I suppose the East Midlands as well. And then again, those, the West Midlands and the Northeast just ticking up very, very slightly. Um, you know, I don't think, Prices are going up significantly there. I think it's just probably a quirk of the data for that month. I think the general direction is down. And again, we're not changing our forecast. We think house prices down 10% in the year, and this is you know broadly broadly on track with with those forecasts. Um, and if we look at the next slide, yeah, you know, just to put this in perspective, yes, yes, it's pointing down. And if you're a homeowner, you never want to see that. Um, and if you're a home buyer without a home already, obviously you do. Um, but let's put it in context, right? So since the first lockdown on the final slide, average house price is up 59,210 pounds since first lockdown. And again, as we as we often say, you know, if we were back in March, 2020, April, 2020, and we said, oh, don't worry, in two years time or three years time, um, house prices is gonna be 60 grand up, you know, people would have said we were stupid and mad and what were we thinking so you know let's not forget there's all those gains um you know i obviously not start worrying but you know if all those gains get eaten away then it's a different story but that's a lot of gains isn't it to get to get eaten away and i, I just don't see that i just don't see that happening no no i think you're right <clears throat> i think there is still demand i think we've seen um noise on the grapevine that um you know there is pockets or there are pockets of activity out there regionally um some agents are saying that's not the case which is we expect and others are saying it's kind of okay where we are so there are lots and lots and lots of micro markets going on where there are conflicting evidences of what's going on we all expected transaction volumes to be lower as you said Anthony we said before that it's going to take the, the heat out of house price if you're not selling your house price is not affected you're not bowing out of the market so you're not cashing in so you know the fact that there is this movement in, in in transaction values doesn't affect your property value your property value is only affected when you cash out so you know let's not get too too worried about that but yeah there's nothing there unexpected though really is there i'm, I'm just seeing what we've predicted we're seeing a bit of a downturn we're seeing a bit of apprehension in the marketplace people are a bit of unsure about what's going on cost of living affecting things those that don't have to move aren't moving those that do have to move are moving there are fewer people that have to move than fancy a move so you know we're going to see fewer transactions and that's kind of okay um so yeah it, it's again half glass full i'm quite buoyed up by the fact that there's nothing dropping off a cliff and um, there's no really horrific news out there unless you're going to we're going to talk about some clangers that you've you've uh, investigated in the where's hot and where's not data um how is your welsh this week 
Well, you know, it's from a very low base. I think it is improving, um, which all our regular listeners will be will be glad to hear. Um, so yeah, if we if we look at the, the the winners the winners last month, and if we go percentages first, um, so it puts kind of all the 380 odd local authorities on on an even keel. So you know, despite this doom and gloom in North East Derbyshire, shout out to North East Derbyshire. If you you know if if you're living in North East Derbyshire, well done, right? Last month, house prices up 6.4 percent. Hello, you know, on average we're down 1.1. You up 6.4, um, and then the Isle of Anglesey, Anglesey, in second place, up 4.2 percent. North Norfolk 3.9 percent. Mid Sussex 3.6 percent. So you know, the, the, some places are going up. And if we look at the monetary values now, you know, obviously this does many times favour London just because the, the big prices. But in monetary terms, Kensington and Chelsea. Forty-three thousand five hundred pounds up last month. Hammersmith and Fulham nineteen thousand nine hundred. Mid Sussex sixteen thousand seven hundred. And North East Derbyshire, see that six point four percent translates into fifteen thousand six hundred pounds. Paper profit, nicely done. Um, and if we look at the the year, if we look at the last year, the winner, Pendle, Pendle up twenty percent in the year. North East Derbyshire nineteen point nine. Uh, percent, uh, Merthyr Tidville, sixteen point one percent. You know, Mrs. Mrs. Trellis's uh, nephew. You'll be laughing all the way to the estate agent there as he tries to sell his home. Um, now, interestingly, if we look at the monetary values, London isn't top. Mole Valley, Mole Valley, seventy-two thousand pounds. Seventy-two thousand pounds up in the year. Rochford, fifty-eight thousand nine hundred. And then the City of London, First London, up fifty-eight thousand one hundred pounds. Um, now that's in the year. If we if we look at the worst performers, the worst performers last month in percentage terms, it's once again City of London down seven percent. Now there's not many homes relatively in the City of London. It's a very small area, it's a square mile. It's not a big residential area, so you do get quite a bit of variability in the house prices there. But you know, seven percent is a big move. Um, South Hams down six point two percent, and then Bridge End, Bridge End down five point one percent. So there are some big moves there. Um, and then finally, let's look at those those lockdown winners and losers. So the winners, Blind Eye Gwent, up 49.9%. I mean, Wales Wales is doing really well in, in the lockdown winners. Carmarthenshire up 44% and um, Rhonda up 42.3% big gains there, big gains. And if we look at the the monetary values, in top place, Waverley, £131,700. Then Elmbridge, 129000 And then the Cotswolds, 127000 And then Woking, then South Oxford, then Bath, North Sea, Somerset, Mid-Sussex, Mole Valley, Weldon. No sign of London in those in those top um, lockdown winners, interestingly. You know, all those big gains outside of London. Um, in actual fact, the lockdown losers, the lockdown losers are where we find London. So City of Westminster down 108,000, Kensington and Chelsea down 41,000, Islington only up 2,000. So yeah, your top three, actually your top four, top five, top six, top seven are all in London of the lockdown losers. So yeah, um, you know, if you're anywhere but London, lockdown's been been okay, it seems. But that must be down to the trends and behaviours of people in lockdown just saying oh I'll suffer this first bit I'm in my London flat I've got no outside space I can't go anywhere do anything what do I do about it I know I'll move out of London and we've seen demand in the outlying areas or you know the, the more rural zones accepting all this influx of buyers that are moving out of these urban areas to get a bit more of a rural lifestyle. So it's no wonder that some of these big urban areas have, have suffered as a result because demand has dropped, people have left and, you know, it was going to be shown in the figures that way. So, yeah, no surprise. Yeah, that, that race for space that we had, um, as you say, people working from home, uh, needing outside space and, you know, that flexibility of being able to work, you know, for those for those that can, for those that can and are able, you know, all those knowledge-based workers, computer-based workers, if you can work from home, and I, 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 you know, at the time, I just hoped this could be the best thing for leveling up ever, 
because you know no longer do you need to be tied to your commute you could live wherever you want as long as there's an internet connection you could do your work you know if you're moving to um, a less affluent area you'd still be earning those same wages and you'd be spending those wages in that area you know so that i think that would do more for wealth um, equality than building new roads and new and new train lines um but you know interestingly i mean i work from home but you know five days a week um, but, you know, my, my friends and colleagues uh, who are kind of office based, they're saying there's a pull back to the office now, interestingly. And even even the tech firms are doing it. Right? The tech firms who led the way, you know, they're now saying, yeah, we need you in the office three days a week, um, which is which is interesting. Um, yeah. You know, these trends, they move. They're fickle, aren't they? They, they, they turn on a sixpence. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, there's there's no keeping up with it. Um, surprising that the, the industry is sort of dragging people back into the office. I, I must admit, I thought remote working was working. Well, look, was there anything else we needed to cover? This seems to have been a sort of a quick flash through um, uh, all those uh, those um, talking points. Yeah, I, I think I think I think that's it. I say you know the the until yesterday the surprise um, bank rate rise. Um, you know, next week we'll get the uh mortgage approvals number which as you know is my you know, the key in my mind the absolute key indicator of how the how the housing market is going and we'll get the latest data from the bank of england on um what's actually happening with with mortgage rates and i think we'll also have a we'll also have a look at the um swap rates as well next week um be interesting to see how they've reacted um to the bank rate decision today it was you know interesting what's interesting about the swap rates i mean appreciate it's a niche interest but what what i found interesting in the swap rates was that the the spread so the difference between the the swap rate and the bank of england rate had been coming down it had been lower than its average um over the last few days which suggests that the financial markets think there's good stability and less risk of of big increases in bank rate and um yeah i guess it's it's comforting to hear that you know, the bank of england still thinking a peak of four and a half um later on this year you know obviously come the mini budget we were thinking i don't know is it five is it six is it seven we just didn't know and, and the, the swap rates went all over the place but that yeah we'll be watching that stability closely for you and report next week excellent well look let's call that a wrap for uh, episode 10 um so next week we'll be taking a look at the mortgage approvals as Anthony says the swap and mortgage rates and possibly take a look at housing affordability although i suspect it may make for some grim listening next week if we cover that one but thank you for joining us today uh, remember to subscribe to the channel we look forward to catching up with you again next week so for the time being it's goodbye from him goodbye and it's goodbye from me goodbye <laughs>